I'm using the, the black arrow tool that I've been using uh, this entire time. I can now roll over the side of this, uh, uh, the, well, it's basically the tween path, and adjust it like this. So I can just uh, kind of pull down. And now, instead of having to put uh, a keyframe down here and a keyframe maybe here or here to make this nice smooth arc, it uh, goes and it, it does it for you. And another option you can do too is uh, go and click the, the sub selection or the white arrow. And from this, uh, once you've already got a curve in there, you can see that um, it's kind of got these uh, Bezier handles to uh, manipulate uh, where exactly that uh, curve goes. So you can have a little bit of fun with that. But again, this is a programming lesson. So what are we doing messing around with all this? Um, let's uh, let's come back out over here to uh, scene one again. But just know that if I were to publish at this point, the um, no, that's kind of weird. What I, what I do wrong there? Oh, right. Oh, interesting. Hold on a sec. Well, let me publish one more time. Ignore those errors there for a second, but just see that uh, we've got this looping uh, movie clip on here. That's the thing that we'll end up controlling in just a second. What I messed up on, or the, that I didn't um, uh, have the hindsight to think about, was that when I uh, created this, uh, when I created another movie clip out of our movie clip, the clip that had the instance name of Moon, I kind of destroyed all connections with the um, with this action script right here um, and our Moon. Okay, because if I were to select this right now, you can see that it doesn't have an instance name. Okay, and of course I can add that back back in here really quick. Okay, Moon like so, and everything will be good. Um, me and my kind of perfectionist little world, probably what I would want to do though is double click back inside of here again and then just take out that instance name. And I, I guess it probably appears. Okay, that's the only place it appears. Um, why would I do that? I guess probably actually just to, so that you guys aren't confused either if you open up the, the example file for this and see two instance names. But again, now we've kind of made our world perfect again. Uh, if I were to publish, I'm not going to get any errors, okay? Um, although uh, one thing that has kind of changed a little bit here is remember we did alter the rotation of um, of our boon and that's why uh, we're seeing a little bit of a different path right now um, with uh, where that curve is going to, but um, it's okay. All right, uh, now to actually play around with this, we are going to write moon dot stop. Okay, so throw that in there, and it's not doing anything again. All right, we told it to stop, and it stopped that timeline inside of itself. Okay, that's kind of the key thing to remember right there. This moon dot stop had absolutely no effect on our main timeline up here. Uh, if we did want to um, affect that timeline, it would be just right stop or as you can see I've kind of already typed down here play again so we're, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to tell the moon to stop and then immediate, immediately play again you're not going to notice any difference than if those didn't exist um, it's not like there's any sort of delay where the the compiler goes oh wait stop okay now I'm going to go play it's it basically just ignores it in some sense but um, as I was about to start saying again uh, the play would also work for um, your, your main timeline as well. So you can just kind of see that if you're dealing with the main timeline, uh, you just don't put any sort of instance name in front of it. Although your timeline doesn't really have the same properties that we've, we've gone through um, over here, like X, Y with an, an rotation. But, um, you know, there's definitely cases like this, what we're doing right now, stop and play, that do apply to both a movie clip and um, your main timeline. So let's keep the fun going here. Uh, another thing that we can do is write moon dot go to and stop. Uh, let's just send it to frame 40. Okay. So, pretty unexciting. It just goes out there to frame 40. Uh, alternatively, we can also write go to and play frame 41. And again, it'll just begin its loop a little bit further on and then go back to the beginning again. Uh, you can also write. Uh, moon dot next frame. This is kind of a little quick way of progressing it, so that it's gonna go to the next frame. Uh, the the key thing about that is that it um, it doesn't play and go to the next frame. 
Okay, so it just stops at that next frame. And then, can anybody guess what the next line of code will be? Moon dot previous frame. And um, I'm surprised I haven't mentioned this yet before, but uh, you know, if you ever see code that I'm writing and you write it and it doesn't turn a different color, for example, if you forgot to capitalize that F, things aren't gonna work for you. Okay, oops, previous frame. All right, let's get a little bit of feedback um, from the program itself about uh, the properties um, that uh, exist for this moon. And to do that, you can always write in here trace, okay? And then inside these pre parentheses, uh, you can essentially ask yourself questions. Like, um, for example, moon uh, dot alpha, okay? Like now granted, we did just assign it over here of a value of one and it hasn't changed, but if we did want to know what that was, you can see that we got this number one over here and that's exactly what the alpha is. Uh, you can also put in here in, here in quotes, uh, moon alpha is, and then do a plus sign like that. Actually, let's put a little space right there in a semicolon. So that way when you um, send something to the output window, um, it's a little bit prettier for you. Moon alpha is, okay. And um, that might seem a little trite right now because we already know all these properties are listed on here. But um, sending the output statements or, or tracing statements like this is one of the most essential things that you're gonna do um, in programming. Because, you know, let's say you have a thousand lines of code, uh, lots of objects interacting with other objects. Um, you don't always know what exactly is happening at a certain time and um, it's good to just get some feedback um, and essentially again ask yourself a question and um, get an answer for it and it, it does become especially helpful too when when you have things um, well that we're going to talk about just a little bit that are uh, lines of code that are constantly running okay and they might be constantly adding or constantly subtracting and so you can kind of see in this output window and you'll see lots of lines of code go back go past really quickly um, for what those values are but if you had enough for one session let's uh, pick up everything in video number two or part two